So my neighbors are artists. My neighbor uh, Alyssa is a uh, very talented potter, a ceramicist, and my neighbor Seth, her husband, is a musician and uh, cuts hair. She's a, in my definition, uh, he's a sculptor. And uh, right now they're preparing for an art show. So I thought I would go over there and uh, just give them some feedback about their booth. I was just over there a little bit ago and uh, I kind of invited myself over there when they sent me some pictures of their booth space because I've been doing art show booths for 16 years. So I'm well acquainted with this stuff. I've been doing it as a you know full-time career for a long time, selling original art from art booths. So I have some feedback for them. So let's go do it. Let's give them some feedback. All right, look at these two studs. This is their first art show booth and it already looks better than mine. Um, how you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> cool, so this is Seth and Alyssa. Um, actually, this is Seth and Alyssa. <laughs> this is their booth. I thought it would be a good opportunity for other people setting up booths to uh, see their cool idea and uh, also just maybe throw a few other ideas at them that maybe they've already told them. Um, first thing is uh, safety measures. So when you have uh, a booth like this, it's not uncommon in the summertime for wind to come up, come up strong, and uh, blow the booth <laughs> right over, including the tent, carry the tent right away. It's so common, honestly, I've seen it happen uh, to so many booths and so the first thing you need to be concerned about is securing your tent. Most of the time at art shows you're on the concrete, sometimes you'll be on grass where you can very easily just stake down into the ground. That's a very easy way of handling, uh, stabilizing the tent. But you also might be on the uh, concrete where you'll need to come up with a weight system. And one way that you can do that is just create a box out of uh, three quarter inch plywood pine that kind of uh, comes up from the ground that ties to the either the legs or the structure above and it's filled with concrete and you can just mix wet concrete pour it into the cement plug up the bottom of that kind of four by four plywood box and that'll be a 30 or 40 pound weight to keep your tent from flying away uh, just a quick note from future me watching and editing this you can also use a three or four inch PVC plastic pipe with end caps. You can go to Home Depot and get the end caps for that PVC and use PVC glue to glue the cap at the bottom and then fill it with, again, just concrete bags that you buy at Home Depot, filled with water, mix it in five gallon pails. And you can very easily make yourself weights for your tent that way as well. You can also screw into the top an eyelet screw. Um, you know, you know what an eyelet screw is, I'll show you. Uh, that way you can attach the uh, tent to the eyelet screw, probably something bigger than this, and that's going to secure your tent. And also, you know, say it's three feet uh, long, that PVC, full of concrete, it's gonna weigh quite a bit and it's gonna make your uh, tent a lot more secure, especially when you have one on each four posts. Now the other thing that we were talking about, Seth and I, is uh, how it's, it'd, it'd be pretty important to secure these because one thing that could very easily happen, gust of wind comes up and uh, blows this whole situation over. So if he moves these structures over so that the bracing here uh, touches his um, little structure here, that it'll uh, keep it from getting blown away. So that's nice. Uh, be a nice way of preventing this from <laughs> being destroyed. And uh, let's see, oh, I love the payment area. It's important to have a little space where you can take payment that doesn't make people feel uncomfortable but uh, more importantly shows other people who are walking by out here that you're doing business people love to support people who are doing business we're like very social um you know lemming <laughs> sheep uh, we like to just kind of follow what other people are doing and most of my sales are made in like a chain reaction so one person will see that someone is buying something and another person will come by and be like oh wow look honey look at this artwork it's great people are buying it and they'll buy something and so on and so forth so having it right out in the open here is really cool i like that they made this like linen covered board uh cute little chair and everything that's perfect 
I like the small things. So here's a good tip um, that they've already sort of uh, managed to figure out is that to try to create a diverse um, kind of pricing so that you have larger, bigger things that are more uh, expensive, you know, to appeal to people who maybe they want a nice piece of art to put on their mantle, and then cheaper, smaller stuff like these little garlic grinders are super cool. You know, they might be a lower price point. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> you could be like, these are my most prized possession. I don't know. So, and then yeah, some of these are just really, just like in between. And so it's perfect for like a person like me who would want a, a mug, f you know, for wine or for tea. Or, so having kind of a, a wide range of price points is good. Uh, storage for um, your product or your inventory is important as well. I don't know if you guys have thought through that at all, but even just having plastic boxes, uh, like those Costco, you know, the black with yellow containers, the yellow lids, even just having something back there, or, you know, obviously if you have something to cover those with, that's nice, like a, a waterproof linen or a cloth or something, just to, if it is visible, uh, something that's easily hidden. I see a lot of people with plastic kind of drawers that you might see in someone's closet with wheels. Portable type storage situations are great too, things that you can move on wheels, uh, but just to keep your product safe and stored behind your booth so that it's not kind of disturbing the beauty of your situation. So look at the view. Uh, creating mystery. Like in a booth, it's really good to have some things that are kind of a little bit hidden. People like to discover things. So if you have these boxes, I think down low, That'll be cool because people will walk by, they'll kind of see partially what's going on over there. That'll draw them to the booth. So the way that I do that in my tent is I actually have a wall um, that kind of uh, goes right in the middle of my booth uh, that hides, that I hide art behind so people kind of walk through. Uh, that creates flow. Which leads me to my final point. And that is um, you should consider kind of the flow of the booth as well. like consider how people will move through the booth because if a lot of people are entering your booth you might want to buy a corner spot so that they can exit out the back side creating a nice walking flow otherwise it'll get too crowded in your booth and people won't be able to come in friends and family will see you they'll want to talk your ear off at your art show uh, potentially <laughs> ruining your sales so that's a real thing so creating <laughs> not that you guys would do that to me <laughs> Uh, so yeah, having flow is great. This is great. So yeah, a lot of amazing things. I like that you made this. This is so cool. Seth, great job. Anything to add? No. All right, <laughs> I lied. There's one more thing. Um, super important to have a large object or like a sculpture or a painting, whatever you sell, put the largest object or the, mo the thing you're most proud of at the back of your tent to draw people in. Because people will see small things at the outside of your tent and be like, oh, that's neat. But then when they see something that really captures their eye, that's large, impressive, you put a lot of time and effort into, that'll draw them into your tent. And now you have them in your clutches. <laughs> so that is important to do. Have like, uh, you know, like have some nice big stuff in the back here. So, yeah, so personally, I would, I would have, you know, you could leave this here and do something bigger. I would like to see like a, something that's like twice as big, really big. So anyway, that's my thought. Now we're finally out. <laughs> oh yeah, check out Clayco. What is your Instagram? Clayco Ceramics. Clayco Ceramics, there you go. Yeah. All right, and I promise this is the actual last one. The difference between a yard sale and an art show is the carpet. So this is a good idea. I like that they put the carpet down here. Very nice. <laughs>